Hello and welcome to the math part of our aptitude series. So today we are going to look at the techniques that are used in arithmetic, geometry and algebra. So the first example that we are going to see is here. If x plus y is equal to z and x is equal to y, then all of the following are true except so what you're going to know is this with this except word is that out of these five statements one of them is false so you should be able to point out which of that which of these five statements is false the one the culprit okay so the solution is pretty comfortable so as you can see x plus y equal to z so if you multiply with 2 on both these sides here here and here so you get this first one so first one is true you can easily get it from x plus y equal to z and uh, the second one so if you put y on the left hand side you get x minus y equal to 0 so so you get it that true from the second one and the third one is you mu subtract z from on the both sides of this equation so x minus z is equal to y minus z so that's how you see that uh, the first three things are true okay now let's look at d you know? x is equal to z by 2 now we have given x is equal to y so put y, instead of y just replace it with x so you get x plus x equal to z which means 2x is equal to z and x is equal to z by 2 okay so even d is right so a b c d all the first four are right so which means that remains only e so that should be the one you need you need not check it in fact so there are other ways of doing it so say for example you can substitute for value of x say 2 and the value of y say 2 and with z you can put 4 so you see 4 plus 4 is equal to 8 so it's true but e if you say 2 minus 2 is equal to 2 into 4 so 0 can be equal to 8 so that is false so that's how you eliminate it by using substitution and if you want to you can you know even check all the remaining things okay let's look for to another example a street vendor has just purchased a carton containing 250 hot dogs if the carton costs x dollars what is the cost of 10 hot dogs okay so you have 250 hot dogs okay solution is an easy number to pick for x would be 250 so that hot dogs cost one dollar each hence 10 other hot dogs cost one ten dollars so now we look at the answer choice that yields 10 we plug in 215 for x so x is equal 6 by 250 is equal to 250 by 25 is equal to 10 the answer okay so instead of x what are you going to do here is that instead of x you're going to replace it with 250 that's how you get it you know so the cost of this carton is 250 so so in this equation you have to substitute instead of x you should substitute it with 250 and whichever yields 10 as the answer is the answer so a is the answer another okay so that's the way to go about it okay Sometimes you may have to plug in more than once to find the correct answer. Here's an example. Okay, the positive difference between the squares of any two consecutive integers is always okay. The positive difference, the positive difference between the squares of any two consecutive integers is always the square of a num the square of an integer, a multiple of phi, and if an integer an odd number a prime number okay the word always in the question means we have we only have to find one instance in which the condition is false okay let's choose 2 and 3 as our consecutive integers the squares are 4 and 9 the difference is 5 okay so that's so that's how we use the substitution method to eliminate okay the first one 5 is not a square of an integer so you eliminate a and b 5 is a multiple of 5 a possibility 
5 is not an even integer, so you eliminate it. For 5 is an odd integer, so you, it's a possibility. And 5 is a prime number, so that's a possibility. So B, D, and E are the three possibilities that we have, okay? Now, we have improved our odds to 1 in 3. But we need to eliminate two more choices, okay? Let's choose 0 and 1 as our consecutive integers. The difference between the squares is 1. Now we check B, D, E. 1 is not a multiple of 5, so eliminate it. So 1 is an odd integer, so that's a possibility. 1 is not a prime number, so you eliminate it. So the answer is D. So the simplest way here is instead of, you know, doing all the theoretical way of doing it, you can just substitute. So you put, uh, you take two integers, two consecutive integers, and you square them and you add them. And you see which of the following conditions is satisfying. So if you find there are uh, certain choices that you need to eliminate more, so for that you need plug in more than once, okay? So in order to remove all the uh, equal things that you face whenever you solve these questions, okay? The next example is, what are all the values of x such that x squared minus 3x minus 4 is negative, okay? So what are all the values of x such that x squared minus 3x minus 4 is negative? Okay, so let's look at the choices we have. x less than minus 1 or x greater than 4. Okay, x less than minus 4 or x greater than 4. 1 less than x, 1 less than x less than 4. Minus 4 less than x less than 1. Minus 1 less than x less than 4. Okay, just plug in some arbitrary values that are in the regions described in the each answer choice. Plug in minus uh, less, uh, plug in a number which is less than minus 1 or greater than 4. Let's say 5. Okay? 5 squared minus 3 minus 5 minus 4 is positive. So A is not the answer. Okay? So we took uh, something greater than 4 and we found that uh, uh, the thing is wrong. So A is not the answer. Now try 5 again. B is not the answer again. Okay? Now try 2. 2 squared minus 3 uh, 4 minus 4, but C might be an answer. Okay? So, and you put 0, so 0 squared minus 3, 0 minus 4 is negative. So, C can be an answer. Okay? Similarly, E might be the answer, so let's plug in another number that does not overlap the intervals we have seen in C, D, E. Say, minus 1. Minus 1 squared minus 3 mi into minus 1 minus 4 is negative. Okay? So, C is not the answer. Finally, try a number that does not overlap the intervals d, e, say minus 2. So, minus 2 squared, minus 3 into minus 2, minus 4 is positive. So, the answer is e. So, if the inequality is simple, one containing no squared terms or algebraic functions, it may be quicker to solve it as we mentioned in example 4. So, please refer to the previous video to understand that. Okay. So, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching this video. More videos will be available online. And please post your comments. And also watch aptitude.glib.tv for longer videos. Thanks for watching.